Welcome to Simon Dev. This is going to be the start of a new series of tutorials on terrain generation, which is a really cool topic that's interested me for a, a really long time. Over the course of the series, what I plan to do is step by step build out an increasingly complex terrain generation system, all from scratch, building from a simple plane to a complex three dimensional world with near infinite detail, different climates and biomes, oceans, rivers, forests, tundra, that kind of thing maybe even weather effects. Past that, I've always wanted to make a full universe simulator, something along the lines of No Man's Sky, but with a focus on the worlds and being able to explore the universe. Hopefully this gives me an excuse to work towards that. What we'll start with today is just getting the basics down, understanding how to start by using a simple plane, how to modify it to add height, then how to read and sample from a height map manually and apply that to the terrain. I'm using 3GS to get things started, but in reality you could easily reuse the code and approach in Unity, Godot, C++, etc. What's important is understanding the approach. The code is all available on GitHub, so take a look if you're interested. The link is in the description below, and like always, if anything doesn't make any sense, feel free to comment below. What we're going to go over today. I'll show you how to get started with all of this. Beginning with a simple plane, we'll explain how it gets mutated in order to get the effect we want, which in this case is terrain. So let's get going. The first thing we want to do is get a plane up on the screen, which will act as the ground. So you see here I've got a plane and it's acting as a sort of ground that we'll start with. You'll notice that the plane is flat. It doesn't have any curves or bumps or anything, which is what we're looking to add. So what you have to do is edit the vertices of the plane. See, the plane is made up of vertices. And in this case, there are four vertices. And we need to modify them with different height values in order for our plane to be anything but flat. So here we can see what I'd do is go and change the height for each one to correspond to whatever height we want. If we want mountains, we push them higher. If we want hills, we push them not quite as high. And remember that each point is 3D. It's specified with X, Y, and Z coordinates. So we'll only need to modify the Y coordinates since we're using Y as the up in our world. X is left and right, and Z is forward backwards. What we do is loop through each of the vertices, and we modify the Y coordinate to change the height. And once we do that, we can see that the plane, instead of being totally flat now, it reflects the change in height in the corner over there. But there's only four vertices, so this isn't going to give us much in the way of rolling hills and mountains, since you can only sort of flare out the flaps right now. If I switch to wireframe mode here, you can see that there's only four vertices and two faces, two triangles. There's very little to work with here. What we need is resolution. So we need to tessellate this thing, meaning we need, instead of just two vertices on each side, we need a lot more. I'm going to crank it up to 256 by 256. This looks exactly the same, except that when we switch to wireframe mode, this is massively more tessellated. In fact, the individual faces now are so small that we kind of have to zoom in to see them, which is perfect. This will work great for the demo. Now if we go and modify the vertices, I'll go and modify that corner again. The whole thing basically looks flat, except for that one little corner which is flaring up again. That's perfect. So instead of just raising one corner, let's create a giant hill in the middle of the terrain using code. What I'm doing here is I'm looping over every vertex in the mesh, and we'll calculate the distance from the middle of the terrain, and the closer we are to the middle, the higher the land will be. This smoothing function here is just a modified smooth step function taken here from Wikipedia, Ken Perlin's improvement on the smooth step function. And once we do that, we get this cool hill in the middle that sort of falls off closer to the sides of the tile. And it all looks pretty smooth since there's sufficient resolution in the mesh. Now I'm only doing this demonstration on how to modify the terrain. This isn't how we're going to be forming mountain ranges and that sort of thing. It just shows you how to modify the mesh. The next step will be to take some sort of data source. And for this tutorial, we're going to be using a height map. I'll just jet over here quickly to GIMP and let's make a quickie height map. Generally for height maps, black in RGB is 000. And that corresponds to the lowest points on the terrain. 
and white, or 255, 255, 255 is the highest point. And so I'll just fill in the canvas with black and take the brush and draw some stuff. Back in the code, what we need to do is read in the height map and then read in the pixel data. Then you need to map every point on the terrain to a point on the height map. Meaning for every vertex, you need to map it to X, Y coordinates for a pixel on the height map. Now here's the ever so slightly tricky part that you can just take wholesale from my code if you want. The mesh and the height map aren't necessarily going to be the same resolution. If my height map is 50 by 50 pixels and my mesh is 100 by 100, you need to blend pixels together in a process called bilinear filtering. This is super complex looking. It's actually not that complex, but this does an incredible job of making a simple idea into an unapproachably complex one. This is the exact same filtering that's done for you by the GPU when you're sampling textures in, say, a shader. It's the same thing by linear filtering. It's just that here, we don't get to rely on the GPU to implement it for us since we have to do this manually in code, which is great because we get to learn how this works. Wikipedia is great for in-depth knowledge, but crap for explaining it in a straightforward way. So let's go over how to do bilinear filtering manually, since we'll need to sample from the height map. Given a point inside this group of four pixels, bilinear filtering, all it's doing is figuring out the contribution of those four. An easy way is to first, for the top and bottom rows, figure out how far left and right you are as a percentage and then blend between the left and right colors. And that gives you two new colors. We'll call these PX1 and PX2. And then once you've calculated those two values, you figure out how far between the top and bottom you are. So given four pixels, you perform two blends from left to right, and then one final blend between the top row and bottom row blended values, giving you a final pixel value. So now we know exactly how to blend values from the height map to match our vertex positions. It's just a matter of looping through all the vertices in the mesh, looking up each value in the height map, reading back the pixel data, and then using it to modify the height. What this code does here is steps through each vertex in the mesh, and then using the XZ coordinates, it does a lookup from the height map, reading the pixel data. Now remember that pixel data is three separate values, R, G, B or sometimes four, R, G, B, A, A being alpha. And each value is a byte that's between zero and 255. What we want is we want to scale this to the range zero and one by dividing by 255. And then we multiply by the maximum height that we want for the height map. You can see here that once we've done all that, we've got a chunk of terrain here that roughly matches the picture we drew. Now, if we're going to do procedural infinite worlds though, we're not going to be height mapping everywhere, at least not using height maps we draw ourselves. So in the next tutorial, we'll look at procedurally generating the height map using fractal Brownian motion composed of overlapping layers of Perlin or simplex noise. This is one of those things that sounds super complicated, but it's really not. What we'll be doing is we'll take our terrain, we'll generate a bunch of random nonsense, but in a really specific way, and we'll treat it as our height map. And voila, we'll have something that's starting to look realistic. That about wraps up part one of this. I showed you how to create a height map and then apply that to a tessellated plane to create a chunk of terrain. As I said, in the next update, we'll be continuing on this course, but we'll learn about Perlin noise, simplex noise, and how those are all related to fractal Brownian motion. For now, I hope this was easy to follow. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, Give it a like and hit that subscribe button in the corner. Also, let me know what you'd like to see in the future by leaving a comment below. Until next time, cheers everyone.